Word of God is clear. The power that forgives is the power that heals. Join Kenneth Copeland today on the Believer's Voice of Victory and learn how forgiveness opens the flow of healing power from Jesus into your life. Lord Jesus, thank you for being our healer, for going to the cross, for bearing our sin, sickness, diseases, weaknesses, pains, poverty, and all of the curse for us, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing, so that the blessing, so that the blessing, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, glory to God, and that we might receive what the Spirit promised through faith. And we stand on these words this morning. And as we approach the word of faith, as we approach the word of healing, we thank you that this house is filled with your glorious, miraculous power today. Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same saving Jesus, the same healing Jesus. Oh, that's shouting ground. That is so good. Hallelujah. Now then, with this well placed in our hearts and minds that Jesus, the anointed one, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you remember then, in fact, we, we dealt with it at length uh, yesterday on the anointing. Jesus said, he preached. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach. When the Bible said he taught he preached and he healed. He's still teaching today. In fact, he's teaching in here this morning. Amen. Amen. Look with me in the book of Hebrews. Let's look in the fourth chapter, 12th verse. For the word of God is quick or alive. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God and the Word was God. Amen. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. What did that say? It said the word he. The word is alive. Sharper than any two-edged sword. He. The Word is God. Hallelujah. Now, receiving from God through the Word is, 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 it's not the only way, but it is the best way to receive. Because think about it, manifestations of the Spirit, gifts of healings, working of miracles, and so forth, discerning of spirits, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and so forth and so on. Twelve manifestations of the Holy Spirit, they don't, they don't happen all the time. And there, there's an air of mystery about that because these things are divided severally as the Spirit wills. And thank God for them. I mean, we're going to have a boatload of them right here this morning. It's already started happening. But particularly if there, there's something that is acute, something that's, that's, that, that it has, is carrying death with it, 
You can't afford to sit around and wait for a miracle. You better get in the Word and get it right now. Brother Copeland, you mean I can do that? Oh, yeah. Well, why doesn't Jesus do something? He's already done something. He's right there in you. He's right there with you. He is right there every time it comes out of your mouth. He's building. Every time you say it, he, 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 he was wounded for my transgression. Glory to God. And every time you say it, something's happening. Every time you read it, something's happening. It's coming out of your mouth. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. Faith is coming. You can't feel faith. Faith's spiritual force. You can't feel it with your physical body. But faith always comes. Faith always comes. By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're building, you're building, you're building, you're building. That faith is coming. That faith is coming. Every time you read these incidents in the Bible, you picture yourself. Faith is coming. Glory to God. This thing belongs to me. It's mine. Jesus bought and paid for it. It is mine. And I need to now have the word of the living God on it. And in the name of Jesus, I am healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can be just like it was with Gloria. Oh my goodness, when we were in Tulsa, um, we just, we didn't, we just, Glory would go into the grocery store and just pray in tongues going through there to have money, just believing for, have money enough not to have to go put something back. And she never did have to, praise the Lord. That's, that's the condition that we were in. And I found in the Word, well, let me back up. I heard Brother Hagin preaching about the curse. Jesus was made a curse for us. That the promise of, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. And it hit me. I thought, maybe I better look over here and see about Abraham. Whoa. I found out Abraham was doing really good, <laughs> that he was rich in silver and gold and much cattle. Well, I didn't, I just began to shake. And I said, Gloria, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> she ran in there and I said, sit down here, girl. And, and I, I went through all of those scriptures with her. I said, Gloria, 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 we're rich now. This is only a matter of time, girl. We're rich now. Oh, 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 glory to God. What happened? My cup ran over. It hadn't been long before that. Boy, you know. <laughs> A lot of pressure here, but my cup ran over, and, and the, the financial situation that we were in never, never did hang heavy over us again. Why? Our cups were, had run, or our faith had run over and had hold of the situation. Praise God. Are you with me now? Let's go now to Matthew 9. I want to spend a little more time with, with these three. Matthew 9, 2. <coughs> and if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're, if you're keeping notes, <coughs> there, there are differences in each one of these. And it'd be good for you to keep up with it. He entered into a ship, passed over, and came into his own city, which is Capernaum. Now, I'll just go ahead and, and, and tell you ahead of time, this occurred in his home, in his house. Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. 
And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. When the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Now, this was not a hostile crowd. I thought for years that it was. But they marveled at this. See, he was not in a synagogue. He was in his house. They had come from the whole area round about to his house to hear him. Now, isn't that amazing? That changes the complexion of, of what's being said here. Now, they got distracted when he said that to that man. Their religiousness changed their focus. Let, let's go ahead and read the other accounts and we'll see some things. So, Mark 2 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Now there's, there's something you make a note. He preached. He preached the word unto them. Now what did he preach? Now we, we know. We, we know what he preached. Think about it a minute now. How did he start out? The 61st chapter of Isaiah. Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to preach. Amen. That's not what they were having trouble with. They weren't having trouble with his preaching. Isn't this amazing? But when he said, Thy sins be forgiven thee, it, it disturbed their their religious ideas. They come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, now remember, we already know he said, cheer up. Thy sins be forgiven thee. There were certain of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said, why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up your bed, and go thy way into thine house. It is the same power. He said, This is the Father that dwells within me. He does the work. It is the same <clears throat> power that forgives, that heals. That's one of the major reasons, I believe, that the Spirit of God saw fit to give us this teaching from three different sources. Amen. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. 
The same power, say same power, same power. That, forgives, that forgives, heals. heals. That's the reason it is so vitally important this morning. It is your life could be hanging on the balance here. If there is anything in your life, if, there's, if, if you're holding on to something, that, some hurt that somebody's hurt you with, get rid of it, dump it. Don't base it on how you feel. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. Amen. Now God's forgiven you. Forgive them. I'm telling you, this is the royal law to love your neighbor as yourself. The royal law. This fulfills the law and the prophets, Jesus said. Praise God. Can you see that? Well, it's the, it's the same, the same power. Jerry Savelle calls it a blessing blocker. It's a healing blocker. And everything, I mean, your faith is high this morning. But if, if, that's, if that's lurking around there, let's just stop right now. Just shut your eyes, everybody in here. And say, Heavenly Father, in obedience to your word, I forgive if I have ought against any. It stops right now. Any at all. And I thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me from that unrighteousness. And I thank you, Jesus. My body is ready to receive its healing. In Jesus' name. Now, it may not be something huge. Well, you know, that, that, that you, you've turned loose of that that big mess or whatever it was. But now wait a minute. This includes politicians. Amen. You don't, we, we don't have any understanding of, of how big those little tiny grains of stuff can build up on the inside of you because it never occurred to you to repent of it. Nonetheless, it's there. Amen. This is called washing yes washing by the water of the word yes Jesus saves today oh oh yes but now you see healing was for a, a different time well now whoa if he doesn't heal today then what right do I have to believe that he saves today? If he doesn't heal today, then I have no evidence that, that the Bible is true when it, comes, when it talks about his healing ministry. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Let that soak in on you. Amen. How many of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you hear that? Beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are born again by the Spirit of God today. Hallelujah. How do you know? You learned it. You learned it from the Bible. That's where you found out about it and you believed it, and you spoke it with your mouth, and then you just know. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.